Hi there, I'm playing with Chunk again. This time we have a HP 9000 system, model RP7410, and that's a 100 kilo beast that doesn't work anymore. Goes to scrap, but before that we will have a look at it. And as always on this channel, before we take it apart, we will turn it on. There is at least a little bit something that works, for example this uh, management processor here. We have a serial cable, we have four uh, power cables, and you know this is a serious machine if it has four of these power cables. Um, yeah, let's see what it does. The serial cable here has three connectors, one is remote for a modem, then console where we connect our uh, terminal and the third one is UPS. And this is the normal chain of uh, serial cables with my magic adapter here, two green LEDs, everything is okay. Uh, and then we go to the USB adapter into the PC. And here you can see the startup of the management processor. It's a little computer on its own. Uh, I don't know what processor it has, it has something small. And you get a login, so that's the login for the only for the management processor, which is admin and the password is also admin. And we are in. Now it's time to turn the beast on. This is the power control menu here. And uh, of course I could also t uh, push the button on the front, but that's boring. We can do it here from the remote console. Here you can see an overview of the configuration of this chassis. We have cabinet zero, we have management processor, master and slave, and if there is an asterisk underneath, this means it is it is actually there. We have LAN SCSI cards, zero and one. Uh, then we have a system backplane, we have two CPU cells, zero and one. We have two I.O. chassis and we have a BPS. Oh yeah, that must be power supply 0 and 1. And I think that's it. It is time to open some covers and have a look inside. I think that's what you always want to see here. These are the management processors. The system has two of them for redundancy. It's always one of them is active and the other one is passive. That's why they are called master and slave. And if one of them has a problem, the other one takes over and you won't feel a difference. Here are the management mod modules. Each one has a battery, each one has its own real-time clock. And the processor, by the way, is an ARM 710, uh, labeled with Agilent. You will see that in a minute. Back to the machine, we have the backplane board here with an intrusion switch, so the system will turn off if you open the side panel here. Uh, that's the backplane where the CPU boards, the cell boards connect on the other side. 
here are the connectors of the management and this is the main oscillator 500 megahertz and this colorful contraption here is the IO backplane with 16 PCI X slots and these plastic dividers here are uh, just to prevent a, a short circuit between the boards because these are all hot swap PCI uh, slots that means you can actually replace a card while the system is running and to prevent that anything bad happens there are, there are all these plastic uh, insulators they also serve as a handle to uh, extract the card and here we have a SCSI and uh, Ethernet card it's a combined card, it has two functions it's a SCSI controller and a network card and there are also two of these cards here in the system it has an internal and an external SCSI uh, connector the internal goes to the internal drives and the external to, well, whatever. Here is a better view of this card extraction mechanism. You can see these two little pegs down there. They're, they lift the card out of the slot and then you remove the card from the system. Then of course we have a lot of fans here. Smaller fans for the IO compartment and then larger fans on the front and the back for the CPUs and finally on the front here we have four hard drives and one optical drive power supplies are hidden behind this cover they are on the front you can see two power supplies here at the bottom of the device As you can see each power supply has two power connectors and it's in fact two power supplies in one. Also on the front of the server we have these two DC converters. The main power supply makes 48 volts. These DC converters make all the other uh, voltages like 12 volt, 5 volt, whatever you need in the system. And then uh, on the individual boards you have also DC converters that make the lower voltage for the CPU, for the memories, etc, etc. It's a quick look into this 450 watt DC-DC converter. It has a serious amount of capacitors and all kind of inductors and copper heat sinks and power rails. Here is one of the main power supplies, 48 volt output, uh, 1700 watts and as you can see it is built fully redundant. Uh, this means these are in fact two power supplies in one cage. Finally, last but not least, we are digging the CPUs. Where are these chips? They are here, on these two modules here. HP calls these modules CPU cells. IBM calls them books in their mainframe systems. But at the end, it's more or less all the same. It's uh, one or more CPU chips, it's a bunch of memory, voltage regulators and everything you need to make the entire thing work. They have taken air cooling seriously. There are these two flaps that 
close the gap here when the CPU board is removed and when you slide uh, the module in they will open automatically so that all the air goes to the remaining module. Here is another view of the backplane with the connectors of the CPU modules. On top you have the heat sinks of the PCI controller chips and under this insulator plastic sheet here we have the cables that come from the power supplies 48 volts these are uh, AWG 10 or 6 square millimeters of highly flexible um, uh, conductors and uh, they make a really good lab cables I will reuse them uh, you just need to install some banana plugs and you have top uh, lab cables. And here we are finally at the heart or better at the brains of the computer. Underneath this cover here are RAM modules. Uh, I think they are 128 megabytes each. And then under the other uh, cover there are two CPU chips and one connector chip. I don't know how this one is called. About half of the modules here are uh, voltage regulators. We have about 11 uh, different voltage regulators. These are for the CPUs, the others for the RAM. You can see here uh, there is no CPU socket. There are only gold pads here on the board. And the CPU itself also has only gold pads. So the question is how Will that make contact? Uh, the answer is there is a special adapter between the CPU and uh, the mainboard. And uh, these adapters are a little bit special. They consist of this uh, Mylar foil here. And it has uh, rubber, conducting rubber uh, contacts for each uh, contact of the CPU and of the board and uh, these rubber contacts they well they start to fall apart this is a microscope image of these uh, rubber contacts I call them double mushrooms and you can see some here are broken off and they break off because they stick to the CPU they almost never stick to the board but to the CPU and here you see this mushrooms that are broken away and remain on the CPU. That's how it looks from the side. You see these double mushrooms here. They are relatively flat now. This is a used one. And uh, here we have a brand new one. And uh, that's the problem because you can't get any new of these uh, adapter plates anymore. These plates have been made by Tyco, but they don't produce them anymore because, well, it's old, it's 20, 30 years old. And theoretically, you should replace this adapter every time when you take a CPU out and put into another board or change the CPU or whatever. And, uh, well, you simply can't do that. And if there is a problem with your socket, with your CPU, you're basically screwed. Interestingly, the center, C, uh, center chip here that connects the four CPUs together has a completely different socket or adapter plate. That's the same principle, also gold pads on the CPU, uh, on the chip and on the board. But this one uses uh, some kind of metal shavings, uh, little springy types of uh, contacts and they can be reused as often as you want because they don't fall apart and they don't stick. I don't know why they have chosen other uh, 
CPU interface materials for the CPUs. Um, I think this would have worked as well as the rubber mushrooms. Here in the middle of the board is the CPU module control card. Uh, I think this stores all the configuration of this uh, CPU module. And the problem is AP HP decided to license everything. So you cannot install a faster processor, you cannot install more processors, you cannot install more memory without a license, without buying a license. So you don't only buy the memory and the processor, you also have to buy a license to make everything work. And that's another problem of these machines, you won't get any new licenses because HP doesn't support them anymore. <laughs> 